Hi guys, welcome back to a new Imons video. So in this video, we'll be talking about the hardest question on Imons 2 last year, which is uh, the senior paper problem 6. Now, as you can see, the tight, the pro question here is so long that uh, actually last year, they have devoted like one whole page to just write out the problem. Now, let's kind of read it, okay? So we have a one-person game, and then a player starts with score 0 and writes the number 20 on the empty whiteboard. So we have a score here. Then we have a whiteboard number here, so this is 20, and then this score is 0. At each step, she may er erase any one integer called A, and then write two positive integers, call them B and C, such that B plus C equals to A, as you can see here. Because our first, uh, first and only integer is 20, we can break up 20 into maybe say some number like 13 and 7. Okay, the player then adds B times C to a score, so we have 13 times 7, which is 91. Now, uh, she repeats the step several times until she ends up with all ones on the whiteboard. Then the game is over and the final score is calculated. So we have an example here. You can read it for yourself. I'll just continue the down part. Now, we have two players. We have Alia and Bob. We'll just call them A and B. So to simplify, A and B play the game separately and A manages to get the highest possible final score. And B, however, manages to get the lowest possible final score. What is the difference between A and B's final scores? Now, um, the first thing when you approach this kind of problem, the first step is to always, uh, and uh, not always, but most of the time, play around with smaller cases, okay? This is a very important kind of uh, advice, I'd say. So play around with smaller cases. As you can see, maybe 20, the number 20 in this case will be a bit too big, right? So let's play with, say, Let's try, maybe say uh, 5, or maybe say 7, something like that, right? Okay, now, uh, if we go down a bit, we see that, okay, 5, this is our whiteboard number, then our score, right? Let's just play a few games of these. So, maybe say we can, uh, can uh, break this down into 2 and 3, and then our score will become 6. Now this one we can break down into 1 and 1, then for this one will be 7, then this one we can break down to another 2 and 1, so it will be 9. And finally, this one will be another 1 and 1, which will be 10, okay? So for 5, the score is 10, okay? But this is just one of the ways to play it. Again, now let's play again, okay? So for 5, maybe we can dissect this into say uh, 1 and 4, right? 1 and 4, so our score will become 4 now. Then for 4, maybe, oh, we have two ways again. Okay, so say this is 1 and 3, right? We have 7. Then we will have, uh, this one is 2 and 1. We'll have 9. And this one, we can dissect it to 1 and 1. This is 10. Now, this one, we can also dissect this into uh, 2 and 2. Which then can further be dissected into 1 and 1, right? So 2 times 2 plus 4 is 8. And then 1 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1 is 10. So as you can see, no matter how you play with 5, so this is our like uh, first observations, first observations for 5, the final score is always fixed, right? It's always 10, right? It's always fixed, namely 10. Now, let's try another number so that we can kind of get a better grasp, right? So, we now let's try, as I said before, 7. So, for 7, we might have a few more cases to work with, okay? So, we might play 3 or 4 whiteboards, okay? So, whiteboard and score. Then, we have another whiteboard. And we have the score tally. And we have, again, another whiteboard score and then the last one it's because there are just so many ways to play with this uh, kind of small small game okay so we need the whiteboard to be a little bit bigger so for seven originally the score is zero and then we can break it down into say something like two and five right so we have ten then we can break this down into one and one then for this one as we know, this one's last score is always 10. So, 
I don't know. You you can repeat the basically you can just repeat the process above. So we have ten. We have ten times plus one times one plus ten is twenty one, right? So this is one of the scores. Now for seven we can again then break then break it up to say uh three and four, right? For three and four we might have uh one and two. So for this one, three times four is twelve. Uh, one times two is fourteen. Then this one is 15 then we can break this down into say uh, 2 times 2 which is 19 then these can be again broken up into 1 times 1 and 1 times 1 which is 21 again another 21 right so what about the last way okay so we have 7 then we have uh, we have 1 times 6 well no we can have 7 and break it down into 1 and 6 so originally score is 0 then we make it into a 6 then for for six we can maybe say uh divide it into some three and three okay so it's nine so it's six plus nine is fifteen then for this three we can divide into two and one another seventeen then this one is one and one eighteen then again the same thing happens so twenty and then just do it one more time twenty one another twenty one so let's try another one more whiteboard and then we can kind of okay so for seven we can again we can split it up into uh we, we can split it up into one and six and then for this one six maybe say let's split it up into uh two and four right so for two and four just two times four is eight six plus eight is fourteen and then uh two we can split into one times one then we add one to a score and then for four we would have uh, something like maybe say 1 times 3, okay, 18. Then this one is 1 times 2, 20. And then lastly, 1 times 1, 21, right? So as you can see, after no matter how many tries, we can kind of see that uh, for a certain fixed number, the final score is always the same, right? So this is our conjecture, which is like something like our hypothesis, right? So conjecture. So this is what we predict that will be true, and then we need to verify it so that it is indeed true. So our conjecture is for a fixed n, the final score is always constant. And now let's kind of relate five. So for the case it for the case n equals five we find that our final score is 10 and then for the case is 7 we find that our final score is 21 now if you can relate you can relate it to 5 times 4 divided by 2 and then for this one you can relate it to 7 times 6 divided by 2 right so again we do not just want to prove that the final score is always constant but it is indeed n times n minus 1 divided by 2 right okay so up till here what you have to do now will be induction i don't know of any other way that you can do this but you need to use induction okay so induction uh is consists of four uh steps so the first step is to prove the base case and then the second step is to assume assume some k is true for n equals k is true and then for the third for the third step you will need to prove that for n plus one Proof statement holds for n plus 1. No, k n equals to k plus 1. Sorry, my bad. And then for the final step, since we know that uh, k is true and k plus 1 is true, okay, so uh, since we know it's true, then we should write statement holds, means statement is true for all n. So in this case, we're working with just uh, positive integers, right? So what is our statement in this case? We have just written our statement in the conjecture. So our statement is, uh, in this game, the final score, the final score for a, for an integer, for an integer n is always 
n times n minus 1 divided by 2. But here, uh, using induction alone is not enough, so we will need to use another thing called strong induction. And strong induction, to be honest, is not really different from induction. It's, it's just that in this step, in the step that, in the second step, we just need to assume that all the things that come before k plus 1 is true, meaning in strong induction, this k, k, we will change it into oh, 1, 2, blah, 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 until k, okay? So it means all of this is true, so we need strong induction because one case alone is not enough. It build this thing, it builds up on itself, right? So uh, since we need to, okay, so for this statement, we, let's prove a base case base case equals to so we make n equals to 2 right because if it's 1 then you can't really do anything so uh, for our number so what number on whiteboard and then score we have 2 and then we can the original score is 0 and then we can divide it into 1 1 1 times 1 is 1 which is indeed 1 1 indeed equals to 2 times 2 minus 1 divided by 2 right okay now, suppose, so the second step is to suppose that uh, all n equals to 1, 2, 3, k fulfill the statement. Okay, fulfill the statement. Meaning, uh, for uh, 1, small one smaller than or equal to k no smaller than or equal to n and then n smaller than or equal to k the final score is now let's go down a bit we need to go down a lot actually so the final score is n times n minus 1 divided by 2 so this is our second step right now for the third step we need to prove that for uh for k plus 1 for the case so the third step will be for the case n equals to k plus 1 now score and then we no score and then the whiteboard number okay so we know that for the original it's score 0 and then we have k plus 1 here we can divide this into uh, 1 and k plus no we can divide this into 1 and k which is k and then since we know that the um the final result for k will always be k times k minus 1 uh, divided by 2 final score of final score for k plus 1 and equals to k plus 1 equals to k times k minus 1 divided by 2 plus k equals to uh, k times okay k times k minus 1 plus 2 divided by 2 because uh, k equals to 2k over 2 with which this will become k times k plus 1 divided by 2 right now k times k plus 1 divided by 2 itself is just k plus 1 times k plus 1 minus 1 divided by 2 right so we see that this is true okay so since case no since statement holds true for n equals to k plus 1 the statement will hold true for any n which is a positive integer right so we have now proven that uh, wait. So from here, we have now proven that indeed, uh, for a fixed n, final score will be that number. So final score will be n times n minus 1 divided by 2. So this is fixed. So in reality, there's no uh, higher score and lower score. So, there is no, actually I think I should write this because it's taking a lot of time. Okay, hence, there does not, 
exist any highest or lowest score. So we have Alia and Bob right? previously. Alia and Bob both will get the same score, i.e. 20, 20 times 20 minus 1 divided by 2, which is 190. As such, their difference in scores, scores is 190 minus 190 equals to 0 and basically we're done so we can write a QD over here now I want to make us I want to say that this whole thing is basically my way of doing this problem because I indeed have done this problem problem last year before so I'm not also not really sure if this problem is the this is the most correct way to do this problem and then I might have any I might have some uh fallacies inside here so if any olympian can kind of point it out for me after watching the whole video please do do so just giving you a guidance on how to kind of do this kind of problem okay so yeah this is the video for today this is quite a mouthful and then quite a handful but yeah this is basically how we should be doing these kinds of problems and this it will be the kind of classic format or the proving kind of thing classic format for problems in many renowned worldwide Olympiad competitions, okay? So I hope wish you the best of luck and of course we end this series. Okay? So bye bye.